In this video, I want to go over one of the main constructions used in computing homotopy groups. The notion of a Posnikov tower was introduced in the mid-20th century and can be thought of as a filtration of a space by its homotopy groups. This idea has since been dualized, as in the construction of the Whitehead Tower, and generalized to broader contexts, as in the construction of Posnikov towers in arbitrary infinity-1 categories. I won't be covering all the details associated with this construction, since it's covered very thoroughly in sources like Chapter 22 of Peter May's Concise Algebraic Topology, and Section 4.3 of Hatcher's Algebraic Topology. I simply want to give an overview of the construction and explain the significance of it. Here's an overview of the history behind Posnikov towers. First, in 1937, Freudenthal showed that, depending on the connectivity of a space, there is some range in which the homotopy groups of the space stabilize. This fact allows us to reduce the computation of homotopy groups to studying more convenient spaces. For example, if we wanted to compute the two-stem of the homotopy groups of spheres, we could use one of the hop vibrations involving spheres in dimensions 3, 4, and 7, instead of trying to compute, say, pi 5 of S3. If instead we had some reason to consider the hop vibration involving spheres in dimensions 7, 8, and 15, we could equivalently do this. In this way, we can make computing homotopy groups much easier. Of course, this only works in the stable range, but this turns out not to be too big of a price to pay. Later, in 1945, Eilenberg and McLean introduced some nice spaces, each admitting only one non-vanishing homotopy group, and did some work in computing their singular cohomology. In 1951, Posnikov introduced his tower construction and showed that not only do eilenberg maclean spaces serve as nice toy models for calculations in homotopy theory, but they actually serve as the building blocks of CW complexes, in the sense that there is an essentially unique way of assembling eilenberg maclean spaces into a given space. Later, in 1960, Adams introduced a spectral sequence which in some sense automated the calculations people were performing with Posnikov's construction. I will describe these calculations in a few slides, and I refer to the process of carrying out these calculations as the pre-classical program. I call it pre-classical because using the atom spectral sequence to study the stable homotopy groups of spheres is more aptly described as the classical program at this point. I think a good way of thinking about Posnikov towers is to compare them to Taylor series. I promise that this will be the extent of any analysis used in this video. Intuitively, given a smooth function f, the fact that its Taylor expansion converges in some neighborhood is equivalent to saying that f is determined in this neighborhood by its derivatives. In a sense, each successive derivative gives you a higher order correction to the value of f in this neighborhood. In the same way, the existence and uniqueness of Posnikov towers is equivalent to saying that each successive homotopy group gives you a higher order correction to the weak homotopy type of your space. Of course, even in the category of CW complexes, we know that the homotopy groups of a space don't determine even its weak homotopy type. We will also need to keep track of how these homotopy groups assemble together. This information will be contained in the k invariants of a Posnikov tower, described in a few slides. Here's a more in-depth outline of the motivation behind Posnikov towers. First, we know from Whitehead's theorem that in the category of CW complexes, a weak homotopy equivalence is a homotopy equivalence. This is a very powerful result that basically says the homotopy type of a space is essentially determined by its homotopy groups. More precisely, if we have a map between spaces inducing an isomorphism of homotopy groups in every dimension, then that map preserves the homotopy type of the spaces. This motivates us to compute homotopy groups as they constitute a nearly complete set of homotopy invariants. These computations are very difficult in general though, so maybe we can filter spaces by their homotopy groups and take it one level at a time. If the piece at each level is simple enough, it seems feasible to perform all these simple calculations level by level and then patch them together. I should reiterate one caveat. Whitehead's theorem explicitly requires a map on the level of spaces. In general, even if we have dimension-wise isomorphisms between the homotopy groups of two spaces, which we can turn into an isomorphism of the direct sum of the homotopy groups, this isomorphism won't necessarily lift to a map of spaces. There's a bit of geometric subtlety not captured by homotopy groups themselves, and in some sense the subtlety corresponds to interactions between the groups. Now I'll describe the construction of a Posnikov tower. Say our space X is n-connected. Here I'm using one convention for the definition of connectedness, some authors say n-1 connected for what I call n-connected, because it simplifies some statements. 
At the end of the day, it doesn't matter all that much, and I find this convention to be more intuitive. Now, we take a homotopy class in pi n plus 1, the dimension above our first non-trivial homotopy group, since we want to kill off this class. In order to do this, we form the pushout, which I'll denote as x, n, f, along the boundary map taking the n plus 1 sphere to our n plus 2 cell. The map defined by the pushout then induces a map on pi n plus 1, and under this map, the class f vanishes by construction. Now, we can repeat this process to kill off every other class in pi n plus 1. We denote by the space xn the result of all this killing off of homotopy groups. Notice that xn will have the same homotopy groups as x in dimensions at most n, but all the higher homotopy groups will be trivial. Now, if we repeat this for every dimension, we obtain our tower. In this diagram, the map from x to xi induces isomorphisms on homotopy groups in dimensions at most i. Furthermore, the map from xi to xi minus 1 can be replaced by a vibration with fiber and eilenberg maclean space. Now I'm going to describe the preclassical program I alluded to earlier. Now that we have a Posnikov decomposition for our space x, we can use the vertical maps to essentially induct on dimension. We're going to use the homotopy n type of each level of our tower to deduce the n plus 1 type of the next. This notion of n type is described in a number of sources like Mosher Tangora, but basically it refers to the homotopy type when considered only in the range 0 to n. In order to induct on dimension, we're going to use our vibrations to study the resulting long exact sequences in homotopy and homology, as well as the resulting serspectral spectral sequences. Now, if x is n-connected, then we've constructed xn to be an eilenberg maclean space, so we first consider this vibration. This gives rise to a homological serif spectral sequence. Now, as usual, the E2 page really isn't too hard to compute, but we have little to no knowledge of higher-order differentials. Assuming we've finished computing the homology of xn plus 1 using our spectral sequence, we can move to the next level, where we have a vibration inducing another serif spectral sequence. Of course, there's theoretically nothing stopping us from continuing indefinitely, but the idea is that the vibrations in our Posnikov tower take very nice forms, having eilenberg maclean spaces as the fibers. Note that once we use these vibrations to compute the homology of the fiber in dimension i, we know pi i of x. This is because the ith homology of this fiber is precisely pi i of x by the Hurwitz theorem. Some comments are in order. First, the main takeaway is that computing homotopy groups is hard. Although the serif spectral sequence provides a nice tool for computing homology, even the homology involved in these computations is very complicated. Some of Serre's most celebrated work resulted in computing the singular cohomology of certain, much simpler eilenberg maclean spaces, and even for these simpler ones, understanding their cohomology means understanding the Steenrod algebra. This makes computing the homotopy groups of spheres, which on their face seem like very simple spaces, extremely difficult. This problem of computing the stable homotopy groups of spheres led Adams to introduce a spectral sequence based on constructing something like a Posnikov resolution. On another note, I didn't explicitly state this when describing the construction of Posnikov towers, but the Posnikov tower of a space X is weakly homotopy equivalent to X. In fact, the weak homotopy type of X is actually contained in the K invariants. These are obtained from the Posnikov tower by looking at the vibration between x i plus 1 and x i. The fiber of this map is an eilenberg maclean space with pi i plus 1 of x in dimension i plus 1, so if we take the cofiber of this map, we get an eilenberg maclean space with pi i plus 1 of x in dimension i plus 2. The corresponding map from x i to this eilenberg maclean space is the ith k invariant. 